flying off the ceiling, taken by this feeling. Baby, we're invincible. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Knott's County. As always, if you're enjoying the series, do be sure to drop a like, that would be amazing. Now, Taylor Conway, I thought we'd start today on him. He's progressing well in training. As you can see, his ability has gone from one star to one star, but there's still progress being made for the lad. Um, a right back here playing, he's played 10 times, 13 off the bench, a couple of assists there. You know, he's done all right. His playing time pathway is matching up with what he's getting, so I'm all right with that. Again, I don't think he's got a bright future for the club anytime soon, but he's putting in some decent performances, so I felt it was worth highlighting. Are the board on crack? That's a t-shirt, if I've ever seen one. Yeah, I've got two now in the, in the pipeline. The are the board on crack and that bloody football manager guy. Can you show us your corner tactics, or are they the same as in the Stockport save? They're, I mean, they're not actually the same. They're the same as the ones I was using in the Chelsea save, and they're very, very basic, in all honesty, but I will quickly show you guys now. So for attacking corners, I'm literally just... Yeah, this is my setup, essentially. Um, nothing too major, really. Got a guy on the edge of the area. I'm aiming them towards the six-yard box. That seems to be the only thing that really works at the moment, is putting corners in towards the six-yard box. So I'm all right with that. And it's the same on both sides. Already immense from set pieces. Imagine if you started up with the long throws, too. Um, I don't really want to use long throws, because I actually think, firstly, last year they were a bit broken, and I'd rather not do that this year. I don't think they are this year, but we'll see. But more importantly, I actually think dropping them short and then just getting crosses in, it seems to be working decent enough for us anyway. You see a lot of good attacking moves start with really nice short throws, so maybe that's the thing this year. Right, so it's Oxford today, and then Barnet away in the league, and that Barnet game has got an awful lot riding on it. Uh, but first, off-camera games. And straight off the back of that annoying loss to Bromley... In classic FM style, we went and lost 2-1 at home to Torquay. Uh, as you can see, their goalkeeper played a blinder. Um, yeah, frustrating as all hell. They scored with the first shot, um, then scored with the second shot. We'd equalised in between there with Wes Thomas, and then we just could not break them down for the rest of the match. Chance after chance. I think we hit the woodwork three times in this match. There were so many opportunities to score goals, and it just wasn't happening. It's like a switch was flicked after the Bromley game, and then the, the morale, even the morale, you know what you know what it's like. You have one bad result, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you suddenly can't score, can't, you know, bowl divine really went off the boil. Everybody just suddenly seems to have shat the bed in two random matches. Um, frustrating as all hell, but I guess the one thing I will say is these two defeats... Again, I feel like they were both games that we should have won, and I'd much rather lose games that we should have won than be being outplayed constantly. It's frustrating when it happens, but at the end of the day, I'm not too bothered provided we get back onto form, which is exactly what we did against Aldershot Town in the next match. Still not amazing, but what I would say is from a defensive standpoint, we were absolutely sparkling. They had four shots in the entire game and didn't hit the target with a single one of them. Um, somehow, Kinsella still got an 8.3. I, I don't really know how, but he did. Um, Matt O'Reilly was glorious in this game, though. The first goal he got to give us the lead to give us the lead was sublime, and I'm going to show you it now. So essentially, we had a really good opportunity, um, and then the ball comes back out here. Oliver just drops it off to Matt O'Reilly, who goes, "You know what? Have a bang on that! What a thunderbolt from O'Reilly! That really did rescue us. Like we were still decent on the night compared to them, but it was still one of those struggling games. And then he drove through from the midfield to score a late um, sort of wrap-up goal to grab his seventh goal of the season. So really top performance from him. Uh, one of the other downsides is against Torquay because we picked up yet another injury to that left back spot. Regan Booty played most of the game at left back, and He's great creatively, but I don't think he's quite got the defensive chops for it. So, it, yeah, I, I don't know. Just wasn't one of our... Just wasn't our day again. Two in a row of those, though. You start to worry, but then we come out against Aldershot and beat the third place team. So it's a weird one. And that leaves us top still, which is great. But we're only three points above Barnet now, uh, which is where who are playing in the next uh, game after today's game. So it could get a bit dicey if we were to lose there. We'd still be top, but only on goal difference. Considering at one point, I swear we were nearly nine points clear. So that's not great. But I think we'll be okay. We just need to get our mojo back a little bit. We've proven that we can do it, so I'm all right with that. And if we were to beat Barnet, that would be an even better result, quite frankly, and I'd be okay with that. We were able to beat... Look, we've beaten Yeovil Town 4-0 away from home, and they're in the playoffs. One slight downside, though, is the board are now ranking my manager performance for matches as an E. An E, and we're top of the league. Unfortunately, oh, is McCrory going to be fit again? Yes, thank God for that. We had to play Bakayogo against um, Aldershot, and he did okay, but, like, come on now. Um, as for the midfield, I reverted back to what we're doing here because I actually think it was okay. And I do wonder if the reason we lost to Bromley and Torquay was because we played a, a weird midfield. But honestly, I don't know. It's a weird one. The other thing that my assistant keeps saying is to drop Brindley and bring in uh, Dahani. But I just feel like Brindley, he's got the joint most assists. There's a reason why he's in this team. So we'll persist with him for now. But since it's the FA Cup, we can have more players on the bench. 
I think with that in mind, I'm going to bring him onto the bench. So the bench will be Bird, Duhaney, Rose, Walker, uh, Kelly Evans, Dunn, and of course, Wooten. Okay, that's fine. The most frustrating factor about this game for me is Ben Woodburn's playing for them. Christ. Um, is the fact that we'll end up losing this game, probably, like in all possibilities, and then the confidence will get knocked from it again, which will then go into the Barnet game. You know where this is going to go. Hopefully, though, we can pull off something major. And I, I mean, they've not actually been in great form lately themselves. It's actually crazy to think they're only three points top, clear at the top of the league, despite that amazing start we've had. Um, just shows you how good Barnet have actually become. Right then, let's see if we can come up with a miracle and knock a team out of the FA Cup who are two leagues above us. Um, seems unlikely. Might have to up our passing directness, potentially, if that's the case. Or maybe they'll all just finally come back into form again after a few matches off the pace. And Thomas is in, and he's gone for goal, and Eastwood tips it over. Okay, first blood to us in terms of shots. That's what I like to see. He definitely needs to kick up the arse, I think. His performances recently have definitely dropped off. Hall, good tackle from Brindley. Get it back. What was that? Just pass it to Baldwin. Moussinho. Whoop. I feel like we're about to concede a goal. Um... Yeah, that's usually what happens in the lead up to those kind of things. Moussinho. Over the top. And Brindley should be okay, though. Just drop it off to Oliver. Oh, for goodness sake. I, I don't know. It does seem like they've just completely forgotten how to become professional footballers over the past. Like, what are you doing here? Just drop it back to the goalkeeper, go to Charlie Oliver. What is that? And then he manages to make the save. And then... Oh, come on! Brannigan. Older shot. Like, as much as we won that game, and we were still the better side, comfortably, it still felt like there was every moment that they were going to score their first shot in that game. Thomas, he's got through a few tackles here, and he's going to shoot, and it's gone wide. Things like that are frustrating, though, when they like, when, that's not the type of passing we play in this team. And Thomas is in, that's going to be offside. Ah, yeah, he's offside, but he has at least put it in the net, so there's that. I'm actually partly tempted to turn off these, and just see where they want to go, and up the passing directness a tiny little bit. Brindley's done well there. Look at the space through the middle. Baldwin's in. He's got to finish. He won't, though, will he? And Baldwin has missed it. Oh, what a chance that was. We had so we completely overran them there on the break, and I don't know what even happened. But that was a little bit better. Brannigan. Oliver heads it clear. Get out to Hall. He's going to shoot. You know he's going to shoot. Oh, he actually didn't. Cadden. Don't foul him. Thomas does it exceptionally well. There. Right. Half time. We've had some opportunities in this game, and maybe should, in fact, be level. Annoying to concede the goal that we did. But we're playing against the League One side, remember? bit disappointed by Charlie Oliver, and I don't normally do this, but when a player is in such bad performance-wise, I sometimes do feel like substituting them might be the worst thing in the world. So I might actually get Pierce Bird on for the second half. I don't want to try and force the ball places it doesn't want to go. Bars. Turner. This is better. Uh, it's around the side for Bars. Can he get the ball in? McCrory certainly can. Loads of room. And it's cleared away, but Baldwin... Oh, he's got to square this for somebody. Booty! Oh, gets the shot in as well. Okay. Free kick deep for us. We've not committed many fouls, which is still a solid sign for us. We need a good ball in from Bars here. And it's Baldwin. O'Reilly. Booty. Oh, and it's another good save from Eastwood. It's way and Baldwin knocks it down brilliantly for... Oh, he's got to slip it through. He has found Wes Thomas. Get out of your feet and shoot, son. Oh. Doyle. Maybe just put one in the box. McCrory. Goes to Baldwin. Oh, what a save that was. Eastwood's done brilliantly there to tip that away. Baldwin got a really good connection on it as well. Forcing them long doesn't seem to be the worst idea in the heart Taylor's in. And Slocum pulls up a big save. They've had some decent chances today, in fairness. Well, they have their score from a corner. That's 2-0 to Oxford. I mean, they deserve the win. They've created better opportunities than us. I think what it comes down to is we're playing a very attacking-based style of football against the t a side who are two divisions above us. And even then, we've still managed to create some opportunities against them. Oh, it's almost come off his leg there, but it was just never going to happen, was it? Oh, go on, McCroy. Find a ball in and Baldwin! And it's in the back of the net. Notts County 1, Oxford United 2. Enzio Baldwin finally does something. He's been really poor as of late. But that is an excellent cross from Damian McCrory. And if we only lose 2-1 to Oxford United, I'd be pretty pleased with that. What a ball in. And the finish is excellent from Baldwin. That's more like it. Now, what was I going to do? So I was going to get rid of that and just try and go more direct with the passing. And obviously go, like, full-on blast at them very attacking. Because why the hell not? Still stoppage time to go. Cleared away. Bird. And Thomas is in! Oh, his first touch has literally just denied us the equaliser there. Oh, God. If Wes Thomas has a better first touch, that's almost certainly an equaliser for us. And we actually would have got a two-all draw against Oxford United. There we go. Knots one, Oxford two. I think we've done all right. I know there were some poor performances in there. Wes Thomas should have equalised for us in the 93rd minute there, but it just was not to be. They're disappointed that we only reached the first round, but they understand that we had a difficult draw. The question is, will that even matter? That That is my concern for that. And they're back up to a B now, weirdly. Uh, I don't really know how that's happened, considering we lost a game. But okay. Right, we're back. 
Milan Barza just broken his ankle in training the day before the Barnet game. And I just did a press conference where they asked me three questions, none of which were about my team or the team we're playing in the game today. Oh, Jesus. Uh, we couldn't, I mean, we've had a broken ankle and cruciate ligament damage to players on that left-hand side this year. I told you we weren't going to get through the full season without any bad injuries. And now we've got some issues. Although I think Stephen Walker is going to be the man to step up in that role. He has to be. Uh, obviously, we're going to send him to the specialist, but... I, I mean, not that it makes much difference, but maybe there's a slight difference, you know, between the four and five months and the four and five months. But that is an absolute sickener to lose Milan Bars, considering how, like, he's still been really decent this year. Seven assists and four goals. I can't really argue with that. Well, it wouldn't be one of these saves without a bit of adversity. And today, we're in for it. Because if we lose to Barnet, we'll still be top, but we'd be level on points with them. Considering that we, I don't know, and it would also be four defeats in five matches, albeit with the FA Cup in there. But we need to turn things around. And without bars on that left-hand side, I'm a little bit concerned that it's only going to get worse from here. Stephen Walker can, and he's got to. We've got to start Walker on that left-hand side. Everybody else, though, I'm convinced is fine to keep starting at the moment. Uh, Brindley, I don't know. But the other thing is the links are important. They really do add a lot to the team. On the bench, Bird, Duhaney, Rose, Wooden, and of course, Kelly Evans. Um, yeah, we've got to go here. This is going to be huge. They play the same kind of shape as Aldershot, but they've got an inside forward, so we've got to be careful there. Like the defeat wouldn't be the end of the world, but it would continue to expose some of the vulnerabilities that we've had lately. And um, I feel like the Bromley and Torquay games were just completely, complete anomalies. Obviously, against Oxford, we were definitely didn't deserve to win, but we still nearly did. Today, like if we were to lose... I don't know. I just want it to be because they build better than us. Just, but then again, if you put more goals in, you are better. But you know what I mean. Like, oh, Pierce Burrs is international duty again. God damn. All right, so Caveni will come in. I think avoiding defeat is really important here. But I don't know. Maybe that late goal that Baldwin scored in the FA Cup could be what gets him back his mojo, in all honesty. He's still our joint top scorer, I think. Here we go. Walker brings it out the air. It's his first real chance to start on that left-hand side. I don't know how well he's going to do. Baldwin's in. He's going to end up shooting and he's hit the base at the post. Oh, he's hit it twice. He's hit the woodwork twice. I've never seen someone hit the woodwork twice with the same shot. But at the very least, we proved that we were able to get through them a bit there, which is nice to see. They really like playing. Oh my God, Vilhet's got through here. What a save from Slocum. They've got him behind us again there. Vilhet with the ball through. We look pretty all right so far, which is pleasing. For the away team, and considering the form we've been in as of late, it's definitely pleasing to see us doing okay in this game. And Thomas is in behind. Oh, God. Oh, he was, oh, he was on the side as well. This is what I mean. All of a sudden, we just can't score goals. McCrory. The stuff that was going in earlier just isn't anymore. O'Reilly. They've allowed him all the way through. And what a save that is from Loach. How have we not scored a goal yet? Now Scott, now Stephen Walker's injured. Straight injured. No potential foot injury. What's the betting that's a broken ankle too? I, I literally don't know what to do here other than move Wes Thomas there and bring on Wooten? Like, if we were a goal up, I wouldn't be quite so concerned. But the fact is, we've not taken the lead or anything in this match, despite probably deserving to. Um, and now we're down, not to 10 men or anything like that, but we're in a position where booty saved by Loach. The pendulum has very firmly swung back against us lately. And Oliver! Is that a goal? No, it's offside because we've hit the freaking woodwork again. We're not going to win this match. Look, Booty puts in a, an amazing cross, Oliver with the header, and as usual, we've hit the woodwork. And amazingly, even the, the offside finish hit the woodwork. It's the best I've seen. Like, it's, it's a real good sign. Like It's better than we played against Aldershot, in all honesty. And we won that game 2-0, so this is really encouraging. We'll just watch us concede, like, I don't know, uh, a goal from a corner in the second half to screw us. But we'll see. Booty. I don't know how Wes Thomas is going to fare on the wing, but Boldvine's in. He's probably going to shoot, but that's all right. If he doesn't, it's another save by Loach. Just one time. Why not try and play it to the... Why not try and shoot towards the far post, eh, lads? Doyle heads it wide. Or well, we've picked up where we left off in the first half, which is great. Keeping that pressure on them. Nice little drop down and Booty wins it again. Th those two are winning everything in the centre of midfield, and that's encouraging. Thomas. And he's found Boldvine. Oh, lets it go for Brindley. And it's saved by Loach. Oh, Jesus. This has all the hallmarks of one of those games that we should be winning and just aren't going to end up doing in the end. Or we'll concede a late equaliser. A late winner to Barnet. Well, two minutes to go. If they score now, I I, I just don't... Oh, he's offside. Why is it saying 1-0? Oh, right, yeah. Reynolds is ball in. Oh, you are shitting me! I... Yeah. Yeah, all right. I... What is going on lately with us? We've... Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I thought the goal was offside and I... 
I mean, this one obviously isn't offside. I don't believe it. We can't, we suddenly just cannot score to save our lives out of nowhere. And unfortunately, the players out of position, the injuries, it's really not cost, it's cost us. It's cost us dearly. And we played really well on the night and should have won. And then we've gone and lost. Well, um, but it is truly crazy how one defeat, regardless of how the team played in that game, suddenly you just lose everything every ability we were unbeaten in 14 before that and now we've lost three out of oh, sorry five out four out of five screw it we'll come back for easily actually we'll do a bit more of a bigger chunk off camera for the next game try and get some form back i mean sutton away is 10th 12th hartley pulling there too like, it's not going to be easy i think if we could just get a win away at sutton it might be enough to get us back onto kilter again but it's amazing how much the tiniest little bit of a defeat can really muck your team up with the morale but the injuries are not going to be good let's just check out the injury to walker as well Sprained ankle ligaments. He's going to be out for a month as well. I genuinely don't know who's going to play that. Nathan Tyson might be back. In before the board sack me, uh, despite us doing really well right now. Hopefully we can turn this around. There's always going to be slight problems in these saves and we're hopefully going to overcome it. It'd be a bit boring if we were winning every single game and there was no adversity at all now, wouldn't it? Anyway, if you enjoyed this episode and us losing a few times, hey, there's always that, then drop a like, that'd be glorious. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe, that'd be glorious too. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>